Okay, so today we're going to have a little look at Discord. If you've not seen Discord before, it's kind of a chat application. It allows you to have um, messaging between users. It allows you to send resources or to share resources between each other. But more importantly, it lets you set up kind of rooms or groups of people with shared interests. So it might be a game or, you know, anything really. And it, it calls these groups servers. So first of all we need to either log in in the browser because discord will work either in a browser or there's a client you can download that's a little bit more powerful and i have downloaded already the client for windows and you can see it running over here so i've put in my details i've made up a pretend user at microsoft and logged into this computer as well so i can go in and log straight in as that user now, if you are logging in for the very first time into Discord, it will force you to check a code in your email, which this one has already done. So I can't show you that. So when you first log into Discord, this is what you see. You see a blue icon up here, like a little alien thing with eyes, and nothing else in the margin apart from explore public servers. And you see a list of friends and direct messages. It's empty, obviously, because I've got no friends and I've got no messages. And you see over here an active now the first time you ever install it it will ask if it can see what you're playing it asks in a, a kind of a strange way but it's basically asking can it see what you're playing so it can tell other people what you're playing if your other friends are logged in so the first thing we need to do is add a server to this now there is a public registry of servers but only a few of them are on it so it, a server has to get a certain number of thousand users before it's eligible to appear in here. So we can search for things like Flight Simulator, for example, and press enter to search, and you will see the official Microsoft Flight Simulator Discord server, which is great, and we could click on it and go and join it. But we're not gonna do that. We're just going to look at Virtual Flight today to see our own Discord server. So if I go over to the browser, and we go and visit in the browser https colon slash slash virtualflight.online and you see the virtual flight website now you will notice there is a link in the middle to discord so if we click on it and look at this page there is a i always have to say sounds good on this pop-up there is a link at the bottom of the page for the virtual flight discord server and it's an invite so by default discord servers are private you need an invite to get to one Obviously, the story is slightly different with the public directory of servers, but they only allow you to do that once you've got thousands of members. So if you click on this invite, it will launch across from the browser straight to the Discord application if you've got it installed. And it's saying you have been invited to join Virtual Flight Online. So I say, yes, please. And now it's saying, welcome to Virtual Flight Online. And it's saying lots of things here about... Um, the things we do when we're in the server and I can say I just want to look around for now yeah and it say you must complete a few more steps before you can talk so you can see there are things in the server already but it's not letting me see it yet so I'll say complete this then and it's going to show me the rules basically now if you have not registered your or not confirmed your email account you'll get a reminder at the top of here as well but that will update live if you go back to your browser and do that. Okay, so I'm gonna say, yes, I'm gonna to agree to the rules. It's the usual rules around being nice to people, not spreading rubbish or hate or the rest of it. So if I submit that, then this will all wake up. So if we go and look in news, for example, it's all woken up now, yeah? So there's lots and lots of channels in this particular Discord server, oh, it's worth pointing out, each server you join will have an icon in the left margin. So when you join a particular server, if you when you select that server, it gets a white bar next to it, and the whole rest of the screen will reflect the server you have clicked on. So we can see channels within this server bro broken into categories. So there's community, there's flight. So there's things like you know events that are upcoming there's um, voice channels we'll get back to that media so screenshots videos anybody can post into these you know it's, it's completely free to use unlimited downloads there's um, some support channels we've built for Microsoft Flight Simulator for X-Plane for Pair 3D FSX and DCS DCS <laughs> it's only me at the moment by the look of it uh, resources so add-ons so things people have found 
uh, websites, interesting websites to go visit. Uh, other flight simulation groups like you know Fly UK, Bristol Group, um, My Air, Southwest Flight Simulator Group, uh, ATC resources. So there's links to you know um, Twitch channels or instructional videos to do with VATSIM and IVAO, for example. Um, but yeah, m perhaps most interesting there are there are voice channels. So if I go and click on a voice channel, it says "Welcome to my first voice channel," and you can see immediately. As I talk, oh, it's not actually picking me up. So if I go and look in the cog and look on voice and video settings, you can see I might want to say I'm going to use my microphone for the input device. And for the output device, I'll just use my Sound Blaster Z. OK. And then I, if I come back out of here and if I look in here now, I'm lighting up when I talk. Does that make sense? So you get a visual indication of who's talking if there are many people in a chat room. So if there are lots of people who have clicked on chat, they will all be listed and you'll see them lighting up as they talk. But what's really clever about this, apart from being able to have a voice chat room, is you can then share your screen. So I can select share screen and I can look in here and I can say, OK, I only want to share one particular application. So that might be Microsoft Flight Simulator, for example, or X-Plane or Prepare3D or whatever. Or I could share my entire screen. So, you know, the user that's watching would see everything I'm doing, which obviously is quite dangerous, but sometimes it's quite useful if you're showing how to configure something to somebody or you want to see, you know, where they might be going wrong. So it's for educational use. This is fantastic. OK, so when to share my screen, say I shared my browser, which is that one over there, and I, you get the option of a resolution and a frame rate. So if you've got a less powerful PC or a slower internet connection, that can help you out. And I can go live. And when you go live, you will see a, an icon next to your name. And other people, when they hover over it, will be able to, they'll have an option to watch the stream and it will come up big. Um, to stop streaming, you can just click the icon down here and to come out of the chat room you can just put the t you know cancel the telephone call effectively it's interesting isn't it how we still use telephone icons for things like that and then it asks you how is it going and it was great for example um, there's a few other things to look at in discord that aren't very obvious so if we go and look in user settings now where is it if we go and look I'm looking for the win yeah, windows settings so by default, when, when Discord installs itself, it will launch automatically. That's worth switching off. And also, it will minimize to tray when you close it. That's worth switching off so you know when it is closed. OK. So that's all we need to do. So yeah, this is Discord. It's a fantastic resource for a community to use to keep in touch with each other. It's worth saying when you join a server, it join it um, posts into here that you have joined, so it makes some flippant little comment. So yeah, you made it, for example, Fred Blogs, um, which just lets others know that you've arrived. And typically, I or somebody else will say hello when you come in, or you know, within a few hours, somebody will pop in. If you look over on the right hand side, you can see the other people that are members of this server, and there's a few of them that are online. That doesn't mean they are in this server at this moment. It just means they have Discord running. So you could private message them and they would see it light up on this icon up here that's outside of the server, which is your kind of home screen where you can see direct messages that have been sent to you. When within here as well, you can add friends. So if you know their full name, you can put their name in. It's worth saying to find out what your name is. If you go and look in user settings, is it? And my account. Uh, how do we get that? How do we find out our full name? Do we do it up here? Interesting. So if I click on that, that copied my username. If I paste it in there, yeah, I get the full name. It's interesting that it doesn't show us it very readily. User settings. Um, appearance. Is there no link for the account here? Apparently not. My account. Streamer mode enabled. Yeah, that's nothing to do with that. Okay. 
Well, I'll, I'll leave it at that anyway. So yeah, go and try out Discord. It's we use it for group flights, so obviously we can all sit in the flight channel and chat away while we're flying. Um, the idea of having chat and flight is if you were doing a flight with several people and somebody wants to have a conversation, they could just jump across to the chat channel, have their conversation, then come back to the flight channel. Okay, so I'm going to leave it there.